Hello, and welcome to the MSPM0 Amplifier Module Introduction. In this video, I will introduce you to the characteristics of two op-amp peripherals on MSPM0, as well as introductory information relating to developing the op-amp peripherals. We will be building on the MSPM0L13XX and the MSPM0L family to help you understand and learn about the features of the op-amp peripherals on MSPM0. The MSPM0 L13XX supports up to 32 MHz for the clock speed, up to 64 KB of flash, and provides rich analog peripherals. From the device overview, we can see that there are two types of op-amp peripherals on the MSPM0L13XX. The first type of op-amp is the Zero Drift Chopper op-amps, which we refer to as OPA in the documentation. The other type is the General Purpose Amp. In the documentation, we call it GP Amp. In the slides that follow, I'll use the same names. Let's start by looking at the features of the OPA. Overall, the OPAs on MSPM0 are a peripheral that offers high flexibility and performance. In terms of flexibility, there are configurable operational amplifier modes such as non-inverting, inverting, etc. There are a variety of input signals to select and a gain of up to 32 times. The OPA output can also be connected internally directly to the ADC, another OPA, and the comparator. In terms of performance, there is a chopper mode to reduce offset voltage and 1F noise. The chopping frequency varies with internal gains, therefore different low-pass filters will be required. See data sheet for details. With the chopper feature, the OPA has an offset voltage of only 0.1 millivolts and an offset voltage drift of 1 microvolt per degree Celsius over the full temperature range. In addition, the amplifier supports rail-to-rail -rail inputs and outputs. A gain bandwidth of 6 MHz has a quiescent operating current as low as 100 microamps. Here are a few simple examples based on the flexibility of the OPA. Because the overall noise level of the OPA is low, the user can replace the external op amps in some scenarios. The user can switch between N0 and N1 to match different operational amplifier configurations, allowing you to multiplex the operational amplifiers in real time enabling the functionality of two op amps, reducing the overall cost. Users can also use the internal DAC and ADC to dynamically calibrate the offset voltage and gain of the op amp. This helps improve its performance over different temperatures. The last thing to note is that there, in order to facilitate applications such as photoelectric sensor detection, the MSPM0L134X reduces its input bias current from 50 picoamps to only 6 picoamps. This happens by retaining only the analog N function of the MCU pin. Here's the OPA parameter summary. You can stop and read if you're interested, but I'm going to move on. In order to help explain the configuration flexibility of op amps in the microcontroller, we'll now show several common OPA configurations. The first is the general purpose mode. This connects the input and output to the OPA to the same function as an external operational amplifier. Customers can configure it at will, further amplifying its flexibility. The second is the buffer mode, which buffers the input through the OPA with a gain of 1. This helps assist in applications that need low output impedance. The third is a non-inverting amplifier. This helps gain the input signal by a factor of 2, 4, 8, 16, or 32. The output can then be sent through the OPA's output pin or to another analog component in the device. The fourth is the inverting amplifier mode, where the DAC is used as a bias voltage and is configured with a reasonable DAC output so that the MCU can measure both negative and positive voltage simultaneously. The fifth is cascade mode, where the output of one OPA is sent to the input of the other. This allows the signal to be amplified up to 1024 times with only the internal gain settings. The sixth is the difference amplifier mode, with OPA0 as a buffer, the N- minus of OPA0 is directly connected to the OPA1 bottom resistor, thus avoiding the effect of the MUX native resistance of OPA1 on the final gain. Next, let's look at the features of the GP amp. Compared to the OPA, the most immediate feeling is that the overall structure is less complex. In terms of flexibility, the output of the GP amp can only be internally connected to the ADC and the OPA. Only the buffer feature is available internally. In terms of performance, it also has a chopper function, supports rail-to-rail -rail inputs and outputs, has a gain bandwidth of 320 kilohertz. For their positioning, users can use it as a replacement for external 
op amps or as a buffer for ADC or OPA input signals. Finally, let's look at the comparison between the OPA and the GP amp. To help you better understand the difference between the performance and usage scenarios, let's look at the point of view of flexibility. We can see that the input signal for the OPA is much better than that of the GP amp, with an internal gain of up to 32 times. This is why there are various variations in their use. It also features sensor status detection. In terms of the performance, we can find that both the OPA and GP amp support the chopper function, the offset voltage is similar, power consumption is close, the main advantage of the OPA is its gain bandwidth, which is much higher than the GP amp. This helps maximize the performance of the 1 mega samples per second or 4 mega samples per second ADC on MSPM0 during certain gain usages. The advantage of the GP amp is mainly in the offset current. However, if the user cares about the offset current parameter, the MSPM0L134X can be selected, where the OPA is only at a 6 pico amps of offset current. So overall, the OPA is better than GP amps in terms of flexibility and performance. After looking at the features of the two different operational amplifiers in MSPM0, let's take a look at how to quickly evaluate them. Since the GP amp is simple, there's not much to talk about here, so we're going to move on to the OPA. First of all, it's highly recommended that you purchase a eval board for MSPM0, allowing you to evaluate the device without the need for additional accessories. Next, we can start by learning about the OPA through the academy that goes over the OPA module. This online tutorial will help the reader understand the configuration and usage details of the OPA through various tasks, questions, and instructions. We can also refer directly to the routines in DriverLib inside of the Software Development Kit, SDK, to help learn how to operate the op-amp module, along with the usage of the datasheet and TRM. The MSPM0G350X and MSPM0L13XX both have OPA peripherals, and there's a slight difference in the routines due to the additional 12-bit DAC on the MSPM0G. If you want to customize the configuration of the OPA module, it is recommended to use the sysconfig graphical configuration tool. Following the steps shown in the illustration, click and check the appropriate module, fill in the parameters, and then compile to generate code that contains the OPA configuration. This helps greatly reduce development time. For viewers who want to learn more, we have various resources like TI's Developer Zone, which contains online resources for MSPM0, integrating the Academy and the SDK without the need to download. There's also a step-by-step -step quick start document, which provides more detailed instructions for beginners to complete the setup of the development environment. Included in the links is the documentation for sysconfig, the datasheets, and TRM for MSPM0. Thank you for watching this video. Please check these links out to access additional information about MSPM0. Thanks.